what are the, I mean, a vector revolver can be used, some vector V is characterized by magnitude and direction. That's the basic feature that we just talked about. Now, what are some vector operations? Well, some examples of vector operations is a vector scalar multiplied. So if you have some vector v and the a times v is just that vector a times v, the scalar doesn't change the direction, but it does change the length or the magnitude. Right? That's the simplest type of vector multiply that you might have heard of. There is also vector addition. You all seen these too, right? So if you have a vector A and a vector B, where this is A and that's B, A plus B equals another vector C is given by the so-called head to tail rule, A plus B is C, right? That's basic vector uh, operation. Uh, for whatever it's worth, this operation is commutative in the sense that it doesn't matter what order you do that. So B plus A equals A plus C. But other rules of vectors don't follow that necessarily. That's, but it is commutative in the, in the in addition, and there is also, you can extend these two together as distributive so that A times A plus C equals A times C, right? They work just fine, but that's not surprising, right? You just multiply everything out by the same amount. That's just basic, right? But we don't need to go beyond that here at the moment. There are other types of vector multiplication, and that's what I'm really driving at. How do you multiply vectors, right? Both of these, that was addition and a scalar multiplying, uh, which is straightforward because you're just taking scalar times a vector, for example, so that multiplies. But what about vector multiplies? You're taught usually that there are two so-called proper multiplications. Remember that term? What are the proper vector products? Dot and cross, dot and cross. A dot product is A dot B is given by this relationship. A dot B equals the magnitude of A, magnitude of B, times the cosine of the angle between them. Note that that is a scalar. Remember? So this, say again? Huh? Dot. dot. That is the dot product. So a dot product degrades two vectors into a scalar. It's sometimes called the projection of A onto B because of this cosine relationship. So if A and B are parallel, it's a simple multiply of their magnitude because then cosine is zero and that is one. But the larger the angle, theta, when it goes to 90, that goes to zero, so the dot product is zero. Uh, that's important in a, in a context of vectors of establishing something perpendicular or horizontal parallel and the like. That's commonly used in that context. Fair enough. The cross product, you probably all dread from physics. <laughs> the cross product is similar to the dot product in the sense 
that it's related to the magnitudes of the two vectors. So the crop product is A crop B equals E takes two vectors and generates another vector. And its magnitude is T equals magnitude of A magnitude of B times sine of theta, the theta is the angle between T and A and B. So in one sense, these are completely related to each other because they're, they're connected to a trigonometric function in terms of their magnitude. So if you have a pair of vectors A, B, uh, that are parallel to each other, then this product is zero because the sine is zero to zero. But if they're 90 degrees apart, this becomes a maximum. So the magnitude of this would be the same as two parallel vectors in the case of A and B. Uh, The, the orientation, orientation C is given by, by a right hand rule. Can't draw a hand, but the two vectors A B in the angle between them is theta. I did that backwards, but now it's the order. A cross B. C, C goes into the board. A cross into B in this direction. And it's magnitude given by that, right? Now, I, I, I kind of got ahead of myself. Well, not ahead of myself. More information you're going to need. But the connection between these two is important in the context of the, is a really simple way of establishing whether things are orthogonal in that context of the relation between these two dot products, and the dot product and the cross product can be used to establish whether something is orthogonal or not, or parallel to one another because of this simple relationship. Uh, but that's not really the point of what we're talking about here now. Uh, these are both so-called proper vector products. And so people, so some people will tell you that's the only vector product, right? Well, it's true, it's the only proper vector product. There are improper vector products. See, they lie to you in math all the time. Uh, there is another class of vector products that nobody wants you to deal with because it's harder to deal with even than these. And the other vector product Improper vector product is just A B, which is called a dyad product. Dyad product, D Y A D. And there's a whole math that goes into that product. Hmm. Uh, that's the math of tensors. Which is where we're at right now. Where we are now. Nice. And what I want to illustrate to you is what that is. I'm not going to make you learn that math. But it's important to understand what it is because it helps you understand what these quantity stress and strain are. They're not, they're, they arise from a vector product that is neither a dot product nor a cross product, but instead is the product of two vectors that's often referred to as the superposition of two vectors, or three vectors, or 20 vectors, because the math turns out it doesn't matter whether you have 20 vectors or two, it's all kind of the same. It's just a little harder to deal with if you've got 20. Uh, but if something takes more than one vector to describe it, it's affected by this product. It takes two vectors to describe it, the quantity that's under the influence of this character, this type of math, and not that. And those, the quantities we're talking about are those kind of quantities that take two different vectors to describe them. And uh, so let's go to that 
And to get there, we have to go kind of indirect. Go back and talk about Becky from another perspective. Because I always do this because I always found this confusing when mathematicians present things often. The distinction between physical quantity and coordinate system are two very, very different things. They both come about in vectors. They represent different kinds of things. <coughs> and so let's talk about that first. Uh, let's see. 